Welcome, folks. This is the teaching and learning call for October 6th, 2021. And um, as usual, we'll start off with a few announcements. Um, so just a reminder, the Sakai Virtual Conference is um, going to be November 10th. And uh, the call for proposals as well as um, the registration are both open and I've, I've got the links to those in um, in the etherpad I'll go ahead and paste them into the chat as well if you want to go straight there if you've not already registered registration is only five dollars um, thanks to our uh, sponsors long site and learning experiences which are picking up the rest of the registration fee and um, the CFP is still open so if you'd like to submit a lightning talk, the conference. We still have spots available um, and we encourage you to, to submit a lightning session um, between now and the 18th. Um, the CFP is open until the 18th. Um, another reminder, um, the next Sakai PMC meeting, um, the quarterly PMC slash community meeting is going to be held on October 19th during the core call time. So that's usually at 10 a.m. Eastern. I'll put that into the um, Eastern and big blue button room four. That's where the core team usually meets. So if you don't normally attend the core team, um, that's where it'll be. We kind of co-opted their time um, because a lot of the folks that go to the PMC meeting also go to that meeting. And so we figured it'd be easier than like trying to schedule everybody because schedule wrangling can be quite challenging sometimes. <laughs> uh, so we're going to try it this way instead of an out of band meeting like we did before. Um, and the link there in the etherpad is to the agenda. There's not much on it yet, um, but if there is something that you would like to discuss, feel free to add it to the agenda and, um, and we'll work it in. We'll probably be covering kind of the, the usual stuff that we, you know, standing topics that we typically touch on. Um, so we'll fill in the agenda as it gets closer. But again, if you have anything um, that you would like to bring to the PMC, um, please feel free to add it on there. You should be able to edit that document. And then finally, um, we have a, a link to a survey circulating for the open source health factors um, survey. Uh, you may have seen presentations about this um, before at Open Aperio and at the virtual conference, we've been developing this survey um, in the Sakai community, and it's now ready for people to take it and provide feedback. Um, so we'd love for you to take the survey. Um, there's a link there in Etherpad, and I'll also paste it into the chat here. And um, it shouldn't take you long, maybe 10 minutes at most to complete it. and um, we're going to be uh, looking at the results of the survey and talking about it at the um, virtual conference. So if you'd like to have some input to that, it'd be great for you to, to take the survey this week. Um, all right, so those are all of my announcements right now. Does anybody else have any announcements that they'd like to share? All right, so we do have a couple of things on the agenda today. The first up is um, Chris Knapp. He's going to talk to us about the Sakai 22 VPAT. And then um, we're, we're going to um, stay on that topic for 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and then we'll switch to the gap analysis, which we didn't finish last time we met. Um, the gap analysis between discussion forums in Sakai and the new conversations tool. So we're going to return to that a little bit and just kind of get a few um, additional thoughts to kind of bookend that uh, conversation a little bit. So that'll be the latter half of today's meeting. So um, so right now I'm going to turn it over to Chris. And Chris, would you like screen share or um, you want to? No, I, I don't think that's necessary, Wilma. Um, okay. We can just we can just talk through some of this stuff, I, and I don't want to eat up too much of your guys's meeting time. Um, but uh, was were you able to send out any information? Um, in yeah, I sent I sent the information that you uh, included in the email okay. that went out perfect. yesterday, and it's also in the Etherpad. I posted okay, it perfect, there. perfect. Thank you. 
Yeah. So uh, just to kind of pick up where Wilma left off, um, if you're not aware, uh, we recently completed a VPAT for Sakai 21, um, which we kind of, uh, you know, rushed to to uh, work with an outside vendor to, to get that ready. Um, and we're, of course, building off a lot of the work we've been doing over the last year or so with a lot of the user testing that's been being performed by myself and um, some other folks uh, that are part of an organization called VisionAid, uh, uh, where we're um, having several blind individuals that are doing uh, keyboard and screen reader testing on Sakai. And, um, you know, as, as we were going through the process of working with this outside vendor for the Sakai 21 VPAT, um, we we really wanted to avoid having to, you know, rush through that process in the future when we would, you know, when we'll need VPATs prepared for future releases of Sakai. So we started putting together um, kind of a, a Sakai 22 VPAT plan and accessibility strategy. And um, I guess I'll pause and say, if you're not familiar with VPATs, VPAT stands for Voluntary Product. Uh, accessibility template. And um, so uh, we sent out some information. I don't know how much uh, time folks had to look at that information, um, but in the Google Drive folder, there's a, a link to the draft uh, plan, um, which at this point is just kind of a collection of, of some resources and, and preliminary ideas about how all these things are going to fit together. And then um, also there's a link to the uh, Excel spreadsheet, which we use for we use for our accessibility testing. And then um, some other resources. And um, in, in, as we were kind of planning, we wanted to make the rounds to some of the different working groups. And um, of course, teaching and learning, we wanted to be able to provide an opportunity to you folks to uh, review and react to some of this information and and maybe uh, you know provide any uh, recommendations or other ideas you have about um, not only how we could improve on the VPAT plan and accessibility strategy, but also how uh, this group can better coordinate and collaborate with our accessibility efforts as we move forward. So I'm going to kind of take Wilma's lead because I don't know your guys' group that well. I've only attended a few meetings in the past. But um, I did have a few suggested topics or questions to kind of post to the group. And um, we'll just kind of see, uh, you know, what sorts of ideas or questions you guys have. And, and if you guys just need more time to be able to react to the information and follow up with us, you know, uh, separately through email, that's fine as well. So how, how do you want to proceed with the next part, Wilma? Do you want to? kind of take on one of the one or two of the topics or questions or um yeah I, I can pose the the first question that and actually I pulled it up on screen share so people can see the the ether pad um and it looks like Christina has already started to answer it but <laughs> the first okay. question is uh, are there tools or features that we should add to the Sakai 22 accessibility test script um ones that haven't been thoroughly tested for accessibility. So, um, and, and Christina wrote in the chat that site info um, would be uh, a good tool to add. It's got manage groups, manage tools, tool order, import from site. Um, yep. She does okay. say that the import from site regression script has keyboard navigation in it for okay. site management, but uh, probably the other areas would need some um, attention to to yeah that, that, yep that's one of those areas that we know definitely needs some bulking up just from my own experiences um when i started testing in sakai and learning all the different things you need to know for setting up and managing a site so definitely agree with that and i see terry uh has posted um uh, that we need some more testing done with safari and voiceover which is definitely something that's on our radar. So thank you for that, Terry, because that's uh, you know one of those areas that we want to start to build some more capacity in in terms of testers. Mm -hmm. 
So that I know that's kind of jumping ahead to one of the other questions, but thanks for that, Terry. Uh, any other ideas? We are going to be um, adding uh, testing for forums, discussions, conversations, kind of that broader uh, tool set uh, that goes by that has like multiple personalities at this point. <laughs> um, but uh, we figured discussions and forums because of some of the recent things that have come up with that. Uh, the fact we haven't done a ton of testing in there, um, just periodic things as they come up. And then uh, the fact that uh, conversations will be developmental in Sakai 22. We thought that would be a good one. And then um, there's also going to be a new calendar feature, uh, a, a, I guess a new calendar um, that will be used in Sakai 22. So we were going to add that in. And if folks have other ideas, um, and again, this may require you to reference that spreadsheet to see what's already being done, but. Okay. Um, I mean, the the other ideas are topics that um, I wanted to, to kind of put out there to, especially to the Sakai partner institutions are, if you have any ideas about how we can involve any of your students with disabilities or staff, whomever in helping with accessibility testing. Um, you know, we've kind of laid the groundwork in terms of creating some of these tools and things that, um, you know, are, are, you know, set up to be uh, easy to, to use for, uh, you know, folks who maybe just are working on their own, uh, you know, time in between classes or, or work responsibilities, what have you, and they can go and, and uh, work on completing some of the different test cases and documenting that and, and submitting that information back in. Uh, to help support the QA efforts, but um, there's much more that needs to be done, way more than just uh, what, you know, myself and a, and a couple of other Vision Aid testers can even do. So uh, to really, you know, take things to the next level, add other combinations of screen reader and web browsers and, you know, even do, um, you know, testing, for instance, like, uh, you know, we almost need a whole test script for someone to go through and just do 100% uh, mouse, uh, you know, navigation uh, for, you know, folks who might be, you know, using other sorts of assistive technology like uh, mouse sticks or head ones or have limited, limited dexterity. So, um, you know, that's where we could uh, really lean on uh, you know, members of the Sakai community to help with lining up some additional student testers if, if that's something that anybody thinks they can help with. Okay, well, I don't want to eat up too much more. I guess if anybody has any further questions or suggestions, they can reach out to Wilma or uh, email me directly. It's just chris at napstrategic.com. And um, I guess, uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Wilma, and thanks for the time. All right. Well, thank you, Chris. Um, and thanks for giving us a quick update on all of that. Um, hopefully, folks will have um, some thoughts along those lines um, that they you know, can share with you about additional tools or additional testing resources, because um, it's super important work. So always happy to help where we can. Um, so uh, thanks again. And uh, for those of you on the call, if you haven't had a chance to look through um, the stuff in the Google Drive, uh, the link is there in the Etherpad. Um, so if you want to go and check out some of that information directly, um, feel free to do so. All right. Thanks, Chris. Okay, so we're going to move on to our second topic, which is the, um, the gap analysis kind of rounding that out. So last time we met, um, you may recall we, we were going through this spreadsheet here. Um, and uh, this was the, the gap analysis where I itemized um, the features that are currently in um, the discussion slash forums tool in Sakai and things that are either in or planned for the conversations tool um, that's currently being developed um, in partnership between Longsight and Duke. 
So uh, what I've added to this, I kind of resorted it because we didn't make it all the way through. Um, and it looks like the Duke folks are in here as well because I see colors changing and things. So they're in here looking at this in a different meeting. Um, so hopefully we won't mess each other up. But we didn't make it all, all the way through our list to prioritize everything. So you'll see a few of these have not yet had kind of a feature priority assigned to them. Um, we can we can certainly do that, but I think the more important piece is to kind of look at some of the features that are on deck for the next iteration of conversations. So the ones here that say V1, these are ones that are already in version one of conversations, which is currently being piloted at Duke this semester. They rolled it out to a limited uh, group of folks at Duke to kind of test it and kick the tires a little bit. Um, so there's also a plan um, to include these items here in bold as part of version two at Duke, which would be the, the spring semester, basically. So um, adding some additional capability to, again, pilot at Duke in the spring um, with these additional features, things to do with grading, um, the ability to lock um, by date a topic, uh, the ability for students to see their grades and also to have more uh, full threading capabilities because right now it's more of a Q&A so there's kind of only one layer deep that you can go. Um, so this would be a more fully threaded interface where you can have replies to replies to replies. Um, so, um, so those are the items that have been identified uh, for version two. Now this is not all that's gonna go into Sakai 23. So we've got more time between version two and the version that will eventually go into Sakai 23 um, for the community version of Sakai. Um, so this isn't to everything, but, uh, but these are the, the ones that are gonna kind of get there first. Um, so my question to you is, um, do you agree with these priorities? And are there other items in this list that you think are high priority enough that they should either go into version two or be kind of the next up um, when we start looking at things beyond um, you know, the spring term at Duke? Um, so I, I highlighted a few that I picked out um, because I thought that these were very closely related to the threading and grading options. And I have them here with kind of some question marks. Um, I'd like to get some feedback on these. One thing that we um, heard last time from a lot of folks in talking about the, um, the, the features that are currently in forums is that having that sort of artificial, you must have a forum to put a topic in and then messages go at the topic level, that, that forced architecture was a little, um, unnecessary and confusing. But at the same time, a lot of people uh, wanted a way to be able to group things by week or by unit um, in a forum-like category that they wanted the option to be able to organize things in a specific way. Um, so I, I put reordering options as an item here um, and I'm wondering how important that is for, uh, for the folks here that, that are forums users. So I'll stop talking so you guys can react a little bit. Anybody can feel free to, to jump in. Yeah, you guys are complaining about the yellow font. I didn't do the yellow font. Somebody else did the yellow font. Whoever else is in here right now did the yellow font. Um, I think anytime that you empower organization is a good thing. <clears throat> Too many people are inclined to be random and then they lose track of stuff. So is that better? Yeah. You gotta you gotta be able to reorder things and make things make sense rather than just relying on I don't know, it drives me crazy when I go to insert an assignment and all of the assignment numbers are random and you know and you look you got 30 assignments to pick from that are all similarly named and you can't find the one you want it's it, to not be able to put it in some kind of order is is uh, very obstructive 
to being facile or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. Or so reordering, you got to have that. Thanks, Terry. Um, and just to, I replied in the chat as well, but in case anybody was wondering, the stuff that says V1, that's already in Sakai 22. The, the first version of conversations was in by the freeze date. So, um, so that group of, of features, the ones down here, this all made it into um, Sakai 22. So the Q&A part, basically made it into Sakai 22. The grading and the, um, the more fully featured threading, um, that will be a Sakai 23 um, contribution. And uh, I think we heard pretty strongly from Terry that reordering is kind of essential. Um, what do others think? Does anybody wanna add to that? Are quiet. A couple people type typing. Um, Charles says threading and grading are also pretty high priority. Yes. Those are already identified for V2. Threaded messages and replies. Yeah, this one here, all these that are labeled V2 that are in bold, those will be in Sakai 23. V2 is kind of a half step between um, Sakai 23 and, and or Sakai 22 and 23. It's it's a somewhat artificial deadline because it's a Duke deadline. They want to pilot some additional stuff next semester. Um, so we'll be working on these items as well as other ones that will then go in by the code freeze for Sakai 23. So all of these items here will be in 23 as well as any other ones that we identify as kind of must have items which is why I'm interested in these up here. Um, if we mark them for V2, they may not make it into V2 if we don't have enough time to get them in. They could certainly go into a, a version three, which would be the next iteration after that, which would you know, be working toward the release. So, um, same with, uh, with file attachments. What do you guys think about the file attachment option? Is that something that is heavily used in your discussion instance? Is that a must have item for a current or um, upcoming version? I see Jennifer says yes. I suppose you could show an attachment on the lesson page, but it would be very helpful to have it with the with the discussion tool. Um, Wilma, I wanted to ask you, you've got this request out for faculty participants kind of focus grouping or something like that. Are they going to be going through this same kind of process and reflecting on what they direct directly on what they use or how are you going to use that group? You're talking about the Conversations Faculty yeah. Advisory Committee? Yeah. Yeah, that is actually a, a group that will meet every Friday over the next few months. Um, and it, it will help advise the development of the new tool. So they'll get to test it. Um, we'll have, you know, questions for them as it, you know, maybe uh, things to show them or um, other feedback that they can provide. Um, that would go into the development process for conversations. So more than just going through this spreadsheet. Okay. Um, a lot more hands-on and discussion um, every week about different aspects of the development. Um, so it's more than what we're doing here. Um, 
it would be more of a, a kind of a ongoing hands-on sort of participation. Okay. That, that's helpful. Yeah. So if you know people that are power users that really want to influence the tool, please let me know and we can get them added to that faculty advisory committee. Um, and uh, they are looking specifically for people that, that teach using discussions a lot, um, the current discussions in Sakai, so that they can really um, kind of help to direct the efforts of the, the development team. All right, I see Charles is, was looking down at the items below. That's actually something that um, that I would encourage you guys to do. Why don't we um, we can scroll down and look at a few of them. So the uh, the other items in here, um, and Charles pointed to, I think was the automatic group creation. Um, are there any of these other ones here? A lot of them are labeled as must haves, but are there any others that would be kind of ones that you would want to see immediately? Um, because if there are, you know, we can kind of flag them as, as good candidates for, you know, whatever comes after V2. So what's really the point of the attachments? I know there was a separate button and discussions, but you can just add attachments with the editor in any tool, including conversations. So it's just a different workflow, but it's more standard that it's accepted. I don't understand like why every tool needs to have an attachments button. I understand maybe for assignments, because that's maybe what specifically you want as a submission, but um, you can already add attachments. Yeah, you can add it in the, the rich text editor, but the workflow is a little different than anywhere else um, where you do like the file picker. Um, so it's it's like another thing for students to learn. And I don't think a lot of people realize that they can attach in the editor, um, especially with the kind of condensed um, toolbar that is um, going to be introduced in 22. I think people would kind of need to be trained to do that. It wouldn't be super obvious. I was saying the new toolbar. I mean, and if if that that button was important, that you know, maybe that that button should be moved into the regular bar out of the condensed area. But it's a separate discussion. Because I see like that link button is, and you have to like expand it now to get to that link button. Mm -hmm. And it feels like that link button is pretty important, but. I don't know who decided on which buttons would be placed on the standard toolbar, but there's a lot of space there on a regular display to have additional buttons before you expand it. So maybe the that could be prioritized and some additional buttons could be added there too. Yeah, but if people knew how that worked, that that works everywhere and that's a standard workflow for every every tool that has this i think some of the uh, attach but the separate attachment area was before we had a the, it was definitely way before we had a good picker and uploader in the in the editor i'm just putting a few notes in there about that um so when you use the rich text editor to upload an attachment in a message, um, does it put it anywhere in particular? I mean, do you need particular permissions? I'm just wondering about students attaching files I, to. That I don't know. I know that's always been a, a, a question of concern. Yeah, because the way that it works now in, in forums, um, a student can attach a file to a message, no problem. Um, mm -hmm. And it goes, I think, to that kind of secret user place where they all go. But when they do it in the rich text editor, I think it, it tries to send it to resources, if I'm not um, mistaken. And yeah. if they don't have rights to write to resources, they can't do it, which means they can't attach a file. And a lot of um, activities on the discussion board require students to attach it, things. Right. That's That's always been an issue. 
if you want to if you want to put a if you don't because sometimes we have instructors that want students to like include an image within the post which means they have to have somewhere to put that image either in the course resources or you have to train them to use their own resources and make it public um, and that's just it's difficult for students to work through that I didn't know that they're about permissions. And then I'll, I'll clarify that. So yeah, I think the the way that the attachments work now is to kind of get around that limitation. That would kind of make sense, but you know, I think having uh, these attachment specific things in every tool is uh, you know maybe just if we if there is just a couple problems, it's worth trying to see if those are solvable to improve the user experience. Um, yeah, I do remember that uh, happening with a when you uploaded it as a, someone who doesn't have permission, does you don't know where it's going to go, and that's that. It's not great. I doubt other LMSs work like that. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's it's also fixable. Maybe. It's fixable because there are some things that allow students to get into that secret resources area, or whatever, and even that area is kind of like something that we could probably make make an exposed better we talked about in the past so it could be something that maybe 23 or 24 if we could improve on that yeah, yeah jennifer mentions that in 20 inserting pictures and forms and is the drop box which other students can't see only instructor so attachments are used now oh, okay is that like attaching a picture that's Charles was talking about. Hmm. Yeah, I won't let you paste pictures. Um, I, th I thought there was a uh, some kind of image paste add-on that someone had added though for that. It's a separate thing too that allowed you to paste pictures, but like the problem was it has to put them somewhere after you paste right. them. So that, it was like it ran into that exact same problem that we can't, we can't have the feature for students pasting unless we have yeah fix this other thing yeah so if we could fix that then maybe <laughs> it would be okay to have it just in the rich text editor but until it's fixed we probably still need a way for students to attach files yeah all right um what about quoting text um, where you quote part of the message in your message, like you're replying in line. How important is that to folks? I know we, I think we had um, marked it as nice to have, um, but I, I, I see it as something that's used a lot in threaded discussions in different applications. So I'm just wondering if that's something that people would want to have in in version two, if possible, or right after version two, if not. I think if it was threaded, it wouldn't be necessary. But and I probably with the editor, like with you could you could just uh, you, you could copy and paste it manually and use the there's a quote button on the main toolbar block quote, so you could copy it, block mm -hmm. quote it. So you, you, something you could do manually as long as it was available. But if it was threaded, it, it would be all grouped. I think so. Um, I don't think it would be, it doesn't sound like a super hard feature to implement, like, because it could all be client side pulled from the original text and, you know, but like with the, I'm not used to seeing quoted text anywhere anymore. Like with Gmail, it kind of like hides the quoted text under, a, you know, that drop down that you don't see and you have to like manually go in and kind of like cut and paste out of it. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely mm -hmm. a fairly easy workaround. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to just copy a piece of it and paste it in there. Um, it's a lot of discussion tools have that option to quote the message above and it just dumps it in there for you to yeah. have to copy paste. So I'm just wondering how, how often people use that. Is that something that they really need? Yeah. I think if somebody wanted that button, like, you know, add reply or add previous message, you could... I don't think that feature would be hard to implement. It would be added to the editor and just block quote it, like if you were doing the copy and paste. Um, so, I, 
Yeah, I just don't know how uh, used that would be. Oh. All right, so what about bulk grading? And what I'm talking about here, let me um, go into, this is the current forums for discussions. Um, so if you go in to grade something like this, you get this sort of bulk grading screen where you can enter scores for more than one person and you can kind of pull up details of messages if, if you wanted to. Um, right now, I think um, we haven't figured out yet how the grading is going to work in conversations. Um, will it be just kind of a one by one where you go into a message and you grade each individual message? Um, that would probably be the first, you know, Thing that would be done because it seems a little easier from a workflow perspective. Um, what I'm wondering is, are people going going to want and or need that sort of bulk grading screen, screen where you could um, do several users at a time in one area like this? Any thoughts? Christina is saying the ability to see all the students' posts is critically important since often the score depends on replying as well as original posts. Yep, that's absolutely true. Would you need to see them, um, just the student, just his or her posts, or would you want to see an entire thread? Seems to me you'd want the thread because you'd want to be able to follow the the trail of conversation. Christina is saying both. Charles says uh, posts with option to view thread as context. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how it works now. If you click on a person, let me find somebody. So you can, um, you can view this, but then you can also, else? I know that's somewhere, I don't grade in here that much. Okay, yeah, you can display in conversation as well. And then it'll show you, I guess, the, the conversation. This doesn't look like the whole conversation to me, but it's supposed to show you the whole conversation. So that might've been the only thing in the thread. This, this particular demo course doesn't have a whole lot of dialogue. <laughs> but, all right, so um, Christina is saying the display and conversation should be in the same place as the view of individual posts. I think the idea is to use Grader as the interface. So if you're familiar with the new Sakai Grader in assignments, um, the idea is to use that as the grading interface in discussions. And let me just go and pull that up. We can maybe think about how that would work. So right now, this is just a blank one. But you would see like the submission from the student over here, whether it's a file or, or a text submission, you would preview the submission over here on the side. And then you have a bit an uh, opportunity to put a grade, feedback. And if there's a rubric attached, you can also do a rubric. So um, so that's assignments. Obviously, discussions is a little bit different. I would imagine that over here in this grading pane, um, or I'm sorry, in the content pane that uh, you would see either the individual's posts or the entire thread um, so that you could then assign a grade to a user. And we haven't mocked any of this up yet. We're kind of just beginning that process, but that's, that's just sort of my 
idea of how that might work. I don't know exactly how it's going to work in practice. But if you guys have thoughts, figure them. Christina is saying that the submission list on the left can include each individual post and clicking on it would display that post with the option to expand to view the conversations that would work slick. Submission list on the right. <laughs> yeah, I do that too. I mix up my left and right sometimes. <laughs> it depends on whether or not I've had coffee. <laughs> um, yeah, that would be good if you could kind of toggle over here if you want to just view the post or, just, or view the entire thread. All right. So, um, All right, so we've we've kind of talked about each of these a little bit. I don't feel like we've really come to any decisions on them. Um, so can we maybe put a label on some of these? If, if anybody feels really strongly that some of these should be in version two, um, go ahead and put something in the chat. I'm not seeing anything in the chat. So I'm going to um, think that, OK, these probably won't make it into the you know, spring term iteration. So these might be something that get worked in after. Um, Terry wants to know how many could be put into V2. We don't have a real limit because we don't know how much time we're going to have to get to them all. So the reality is we'll get to as many of them as we can. And anything we don't get to gets pushed off to the next version. So whether we put a version two or version three on it, um, it'll come up when it comes up basically um, in the list as soon as we're able to get to it. So what I'm inclined to do right now is to maybe put a V3 on these, um, knowing that well, we can probably get to this stuff over the next couple months. And then as soon as these are wrapped, then we would move on to anything else that we identify as a, a V3 item. Um, all right, so Charles is saying of those labeled V2 file attachments would be his highest priority. Okay, so this one here would be your highest priority. Then I'm going to leave that one as V2 because I think that's pretty important to have students um, have a way to submit files and or attach files because I know people use that a lot so I'm going to leave that in v2 um Jennifer wants to know will the 22 version be in addition to the usual forms as we have now or will it be taking the place of it'll be in addition to it it's going to be kind of a phased in sort of tool um so you'll have your choice uh, for the next couple of versions which tool you want to use and at some point when there's enough um, parity in the two tools that it's easier for people to switch, then it would replace. But at least for definitely for 22, most likely for 23, you'll have a choice of the two tools. And then possibly in version 24 would be where we would start phasing out um, discussions. But, um, but definitely for 22 and 23, you'll have your, your choice of which one you want to use. Um, Jennifer is saying that um, close second is reordering. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with that because I think we got to think about how to organize posts. That was feedback we got from a lot of people in the focus groups and the and the testing that they wanted to be able to order stuff. They wanted to group things. Um, so I think some sort of instructor defined categorization is uh, pretty important. Even if it doesn't get into V2, we need to be thinking about it in this next phase. Um, and uh, so it should definitely come pretty soon, if not immediately. Um, 
Carrie wants to know what's the current ordering system. Is it in the order added or some date or alpha? Um, it's it's in the order added, I believe. So uh, whatever is the most recent and it floats to the top. Um, you can filter by tags or keywords, um, but you can't really reorder or like sort them um, differently. You wanted to do some kind of sorting you'd have to filter by a tag or a keyword or a person right. so quoted text nobody felt too strongly about that one should I take that one out anybody want to fight for quoted text I'm going to take that one out. Hopefully we'll get to it, but it just might not be a, in the first uh, few phases. It might sneak its way in if it's super easy. I don't know. If it's something that can be easily done without a lot of trouble, it might sneak its way in. Um, all right, and what about the bulk grading? That kind of goes hand in hand, I think. Um, with however the, the interface gets organized, um, but it could be like a, a different option for grading by thread versus, whoops. I'm gonna put V3 on that because I don't know if we'll get to it. It might be sort of an enhancement to the, the standard by student grading. What do you guys think about that? Does anybody want to push back on that? Typing. I'm still thinking about that reorder and the reorder it says you wanted to be able to drag and drop but that's not something that original discussion supported and i don't even know how useful that would actually be in forums i mean maybe for the forum it would be but not for like topics within like you say that you might have a hundred it's like no there's no way it's going to be dragging and dropping and as new stuff comes in they're not going to be reorder reorganizing it and yeah these yeah. are this is kind of a lot of comments lumped into one. Oh. <laughs> so a lot of people were saying that they wanted to be able to drag and drop. It said it, I put I would be ideal, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be drag and drop. Mm -hmm. um, so just basically, these are kind of additional thoughts um, around the concept of reordering. Okay. This would need to be uh, kind of and drag and drop is its accessibility it's, 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 issues. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there'd have to be another way to do it. Um, uh, this, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I was just going to say, I know like within assignments, there's the, the reorder um, mm -hmm. option. And I believe it's drag and drop for sighted folks. And it took us a while, but we figured out that there is a way to do it with the keyboard. But the UI just needs to be improved a little bit. So it might be something we might be able to build off of that if we could figure out ways to tweak how the reorder thing works within assignments. And I know it's something I brought up like with the new calendar tool because I think initially that they're not going to include the drag and drop functionality from fullcalendar.io in uh, 22. So I don't know if that helps at all, Matt. Okay. And for assignments, I guess, unless you're doing like a some kind of, you know, uh, you know, uh, or excuse me, I, I, I'm sorry, it's lessons. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I don't right, know. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know that assignments was reorderable, but yeah, unless you're doing like some kind of like 
some like something with like a thousand assignments and like a you know yeah it's, nope. it's a you're not gonna it's easy you'll have a manageable number of assignments and a manageable number so it's the content items yeah. like within the lessons page there's a reorder option i misspoke i apologize uh, okay i was just playing with the reorder that's in the current discussions and i think it looks kind of broken but that's a different problem Does have some kind of reorder, and maybe that would be useful. I mean, like when you're in, and I don't, I think I know they, they they were inspired by Slack and Piazza, and I know with Slack there's like there's no reorder; it just keeps going. And I don't know how Piazza works or what the UI for that allows you to do or whatever. So yeah, it's easy. Like I know, like with Coursera, there's I don't think there's a reorder, and it just it bubbles up the newest stuff to the top, and that's what people kind of. And there's a search filter and. Uh, but it, that's currently disabled, it says for me on conversations, but that's usually how you want to be able to find stuff. Yeah, I think yeah, I there, actually... there is a search and you can filter right now in conversations. But, um, but yeah, a lot of people kept sort of searching for a way to organize in the, the user testing. Um, all right. So are there any other options in this list that we've not identified that people want to add to V3? Because I already started V3 with um, the bulk grading option. Um, so anything else that you think is something super important that you want to get kind of closer to the top of the to-do list, maybe not like the first thing out of the blocks. Um, so any of these down here, I'm going to just start reading through them. Feel free to stop me. Um, templates, we talked about form templates to set kind of defaults. Um, automatic group topic creation. I know Charles had mentioned that um, before. Is that something you want to add to V3, Charles? Yes. All right, I'm going to. Just kind of tag it so it's a little more visible. Again, this is all kind of, you know, not um, not final. It's all sort of a work in progress. So none of these labels here are, are written in stone. But I want to at least surface the ones that are, are more important to folks. Um, OK, what about duplicating a form or a topic? Is it important to be able to just duplicate an item or does, you know, recreating an item not really bother people too much? Okay, I'm seeing uh, somebody said post before reading. Yeah, I know that's a really popular one. A lot of people like that. Okay, what about dates and date manager? Do, do, do you guys use date manager for changing a thousand percent from Christina <laughs> okay so add that one um let's see moving threads overview or dashboard widget having a dashboard widget that shows the count email notifications I think the date manager is useful. The duplication, maybe not not so much as the original discussion, because right now there isn't that many options. It's just mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot simpler to just recreate it. But um, you know, the original one, original discussions had all these permissions and stuff that you'd want to duplicate along with it. And we don't have right. that yet, so right. maybe it, that's a thing for B three or something. But yeah, it's a it, it would depend on how much it needs. I think for, for consistency, it should be it. The date should be, uh, you know, in yeah, date manager. Yeah. Um, let's see, dashboard widget. People are voting for dashboard widget. All right. Email notifications, direct link to individual message, email author of a message, ability to print posts. 
Um, now, Bonnie had, had gone in and, and put a comment last time. I think that this was an accessibility um, issue. Um, Chris, with that, do you concur with that? We need a, a print function in the tool for accessibility, or is it OK to just print from the browser? I'm sorry, can you can you repeat the question? Is leave the print yeah, button for, within the tool or just yeah, use? The, the ability to print posts. Um, Bonnie Powers had put a note on this one that it must have for accessibility. So I'm just wondering, does for accessibility purposes, do you need to be able to pr print from within the tool or is it acceptable to be able to print from the browser? I uh, yeah, that's um, I don't know, Terry. Do you do you know if there's a specific like YCAG thing about uh, le having a print print function included for something like that? I mean, I like yeah. Typically, I'm just doing the Control P whenever I need to print something. So, um, but yeah, I don't know if Terry's still on or not, but. I just have to unmute. Um, okay. I, don't, I don't know of any particular thing that says, you know, you need to do what you need to do. But if there's a way to do it, I don't know if you need redundancy. I, I can research it a little bit if you'd like, Wilma, but I, I'm not I'm not sure about that one. But yeah, I mean, I think it's always helpful to have the, you know, that option available. Um, but uh I don't think it matters either way, but to to make it printable with the control P, you got to make a the style sheet that makes it look nice. So sometimes it's easier to have a separate print function. That's up to the you know the team it, working on it because it does all of that in the background, and you wouldn't necessarily know that. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know what's what's harder to, to make the style sheet that allows you to print it easily. If that works, great. That's all you need. But if not, you need a yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna put this one into V three. Because it's also useful for grade um, challenges and things that Christina had pointed out. So you know, papers like kryptonite to me. So uh, there's, I would not. Yeah, I rarely. But so I print to PDF a lot. I yeah, did that. I'm just kidding. So if you can print to PDF and save it, sometimes that's yeah. very helpful. And if you try to print it now, it looks really bad, and it yeah. looks print, print out. So some you have to do work to make it look good, but you can do that. All right, so um, then we've got a few different view options, view by ascending, view by descending, view by unread. Um, I think right now, let me show, because I don't remember, honestly. Um, posts in here somewhere. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, it just kind of sorts them by date. You can you can look for a tag or you can filter. You can filter by unanswered answered questions, um, bookmarked or moderated. But it doesn't really give you, at least right now, the option to like sort. Um, how important is that for people? It's going to show in more order of most recent by default. Um, but you can't really change it. So all of these like view by options are different ways of sorting the, the posts. Seems similar to the other issue at the top, the reordering. Yeah. These are all the same kind of ideas. It's if you added reordering options, you could do that. You might not need these. Yeah, the newest, oldest, unread, you know, filter unread. Yeah, I could they're all related. I'm going to put related to reordering. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Um, how about linking forums and topics in lessons? So you'd want to be able to link to a conversation in lessons, right? Yes. 
it might be a lessons thing as opposed to a conversations thing, but we need to make sure it kind of gets. Well, the way you can link now. Yeah. What about embedding? Do people use that much? Embedding a conversation on a lesson? Christina says, nope. <laughs> Um, that takes I up a lot of real estate. Yeah. Okay. Jordy says that they do a lot. Anybody else? I'm going to leave that one for the next go around. I'm not going to put a number on it because if we put too many numbers on everything, it just kind of gets meaningless. But um, I'm thinking that the just linking would come first and then maybe embedding would come later. As kind of a, a deeper way to, to link. Um, copying forums and topics via site info, I think that's a pretty critical one. Yeah. If you're going to roll from term to term, I'm going to put that in V3. Now, remember that V3 could still make it into Sakai 23. So the first time that you guys see it, it could have these features. Now, I can't promise that all of them will get in. But we'll try to target all of these before the Sakai 23 cut um, cut off for features. So um, V2, remember, is just like next semester, January. Um, V3 would be like you know, summer, fall, um, you know, whenever the cutoff for um, the the next major version happens. So this is stuff that we hope we can get into Sakai 23. Um, all right. Uh, what about exporting forums and topics? Um, would we want them to go into the IMS export or is that something that um, people aren't too worried about right now? Oh, I see my, Matt just had to leave because it's 11 and I realize I've kept you guys late. So um, I, my apologies for running over a little bit, um, but thank you so much for um, thinking about this stuff and helping us work through it. Um, this won't be the last time that we return to this sort of thing, but hopefully we, we've got enough to go on and we can uh, get some good um, progress made within uh, the conversations team. So, um, so thank you everybody for joining us today. And uh, hopefully you'll um, come to our next um, our teaching learning call, which is in two weeks. And um, the UX call is right after, which is where I'm headed. And that's in room three if you're interested in joining the UX um, meeting. So have a great day, everybody. And I will be talking to you soon. Bye. Bye, everybody.